We've got 13,000 students, 2,000 staff, so it's a lot smaller than uh, Manchester. <coughs> we started doing lecture capture in 2006 um, on a, well, not really industrial scale, scale but on a centralised um, system. Uh, we wrote a system called Sounds Direct, which was developed in-house by myself and a colleague. Um, I, it did audio only, and it consisted of a big green button and a big red button to start and stop it. Um, did the job. Uh, it's basically, we wrote it because we were fed up of carrying tape recorders around. Um, so. 2009, we moved to Echo 360. And when I say moved to, we added Echo 360 to the other system, so we were running two systems alongside each other. Um, lots of problems with Echo 360, which I don't really want to get into. And then in 2013, we started uh, looking at Matterhorn. We've, we've been following the progress of Matter sorry, Opencast uh, for a number of years before. Um, but uh, beginning of 2013, we started a small um, pilot with, um, I think, one or two rooms, I can't remember now. And uh, Matterhorn has been in use exclusively, which means we finally got rid of the other two systems by September or October 2013. So from the point of view of lecturers, well, here's some, uh, some statistics on our installation. This is recordings that have been added to our virtual learning environment, so they're definitely real recordings. They're not test recordings and all that kind of stuff. Um, so our peak month is about one and a half thousand. Um, this is up to the end of last year. Uh, so we do between one and two hundred recordings a day at the moment. We have uh, we have capture agents in all our theatres, which is twenty. Uh, we've got another thirty in seminar rooms, and uh, we aim to roll it out to all our teaching spaces um, sometime in the next year or two, I guess, uh, gradually, uh, which will be another seventy rooms, I guess. Also planning some recording pods where people can go and make high quality recordings um, which will get inserted into the system. So in the teaching space itself, lecturers are uh, often really stressed when they go to start the beginning of their lecture. So we've always uh, been trying to make <coughs> everything as simple as possible for people to use. All our recordings are started manually, uh, so we don't do any scheduling at all. So it means that the lecturers have to actually press the start button at the beginning of the thing, something that may change, of course, in the future. So uh, a good user experience is uh, very important for adoption. Um, as uh, guys from Manchester have said previously, opting out is a good way of doing it, but also just making it easy um, is a reasonable way of doing it. We. Um, some, some of our schools record over 90% of their um, events, so it can, it can be done without the um, scheduling side of things, but it's probably harder. <coughs> so our interface in 2006 looked like this. It's a bit of a lie. It was a lot worse than that for the first year, but the second year it looked like that, um, which are little OLED screens on the side could tell you how long it was recording. It was basically just a, a start and stop button there. But the trouble is, although it was really simple for people to use, there's no metadata at all. So basically, you just end up with a blank, with a file with no idea of what it is, um, which made it hard to deal with in the uh, virtual learning environment. So then, um, in 2009, when we had Echo 360, um, their user interface um, for ad hoc recordings was really bad. Um, and we couldn't give that to people, so we developed our own, um, which was basically an evolution of the um, start and stop button. We had the pause as well, and we also had the ability to add the title in, so we got a little bit of metadata. But um, it did require logging into the theatre PC, so if you come along and bring a laptop in order to make a recording, you still had to log into the PC, which um, could take some minutes sometimes. Um, it also meant that once you'd logged into the PC, you had to log in again to the university system in order to get to the uh, start button. Um, also, the Echo 360 AP API was undocumented and very unreliable and painfully slow. Um, so you could press the start button 10, 15 seconds later, it maybe might tell you whether it started or not. So in two 2013, we, we uh, started looking at um, Matterhorn seriously. 
we did a pilot in two, I think it was two rooms. Uh, we used the Epiphan Matterhorn appliance to start with and extended that previous Echo 360 interface to also control the Epiphan boxes. Uh, but we had to hack the Epiphan hardware in order to add the API that we could control it with. Um, and then there were the massive price increases of uh, Epiphan kit. <coughs> so we just, uh, and also it was painfully slow as well. Um, so we decided against that. We decided to move to Matterhorn sometime in 2013. We weren't quite sure what we were going to do with the capture agent, um, but then we discovered Datacaster, um, which is great. Um, it's very modular, as people have said before, so we could add our own plugins. This is our plugin that allows people to enter some metadata if they want to. Um, but we allow that to be bypassed. So it's a seven inch touch screen. Uh, we use standard Dell PCs exactly the same as we buy for all our other PCs, so it doesn't, you know, it's easy, it's just another few boxes to add onto our huge orders. Um, data path capture cards, which um, are amazing. Um, don't bother looking at anything else because <coughs> these are actually stable. Uh, the drivers work and they've got built in scalers and they're great. Um, so, yeah, we've got the optional login via the in house um, plugin. It means that if the tutors don't want to bother entering any data at the beginning of the, of the lecture, they can still just press record. Um, but if they want to make it easier to find later, they can enter the information as well. Be very reliable. Um, we don't have problems with Galicaster stopping or anything, it just works. Um, <coughs> so from the online point of view, uh, we use uh, a very heavily modified version of Moodle 1.9. So we're quite a long way behind um, on Moodle. Um, but the problem is it's very heavily modified, so um, that might be that way for a while. Um, so our integration also had to have a look and feel um, exactly the same as the, our existing systems, especially as we were running three systems at the same time. Um, so the front end part had to look the same for lecturers. <coughs> and the files need to be available as soon as possible because uh, lecturers were used to our audio only system, which of course didn't require much processing involved, but uh, that was available straight away. So they assumed that the video system would be exactly the same. Um, <coughs> So I was going to do a quick demo of, of our uh, Moodle integration. Bear with me for a second. I can't even type my own institution's name. system so uh, it's a little bit slower than our current one. <coughs> so if you're familiar with Moodle you might not you might think this isn't Moodle but it is. <laughs> um, <coughs> so, so somewhere in the depths there is some Moodle left. Um, <coughs> um, so uh, we add a resource which is what uh, lecturers would do for any um, content that they that they add to the system, and we've got these uh, lecture capture recording and upload the media file. So we can add a lecture capture recording. This is our standard add a resource page. So we choose a recording, and uh, <coughs> by a strange quirk of fate, um, this lecture uh, there that popped up at the top is something that uh, a tutor has added in they, when they made the recording. They said it was belonging to this course, so it shows you that one immediately. <coughs> you can also um, do things like uh, look for um, recordings in the past, perhaps. Maybe? No? I shouldn't have said all, should I? So that's going to. <coughs> so. These collapsed recordings are ones that have already been added to courses, um, but they can still be added to another one. So uh, we can add our uh, recordings that actually, uh, yeah, these are the uh, recordings. Let me just do that again. 
again so that I get that new one. We get a preview down here of what's going to look like on their course page. Uh, Pre-fill the um, title and like, you can uh, change that and it changes the preview in real time so you can see exactly what's going on. <coughs> Save it and now that's part of our course page. So the idea is that the um, lecture videos are integrated with all the other material that's part of the course so they're not it's not a separate block off somewhere else or a list, just a list of recordings it's part of the course uh, big play button um, launches the engage player and uh, we have some quick download audio and video links here we do um, uh, forcing the download on the browser and also naming the files properly by some fancy Apache configurations um, we also have uploading of files, uh, which gives us a list of previous uploads that we've that, that you've done, um, and also allows you to upload new recordings. Uh, this also works on mobile, which is quite handy because you can actually, uh, when you press browse for media, it will pop up the camcorder or whatever, so you can actually do live recording and then um, insert it directly into, into mass one. Um, uh, we also do some stuff with the rotation as well, so if it's recorded on a, on a mobile device, it will work out which orientation you recorded it at and try and spin it down to the right orientation. Uh, so that's our... Oops. That's our uh, Moodle integration. So for students, obviously they're... Um, Mostly they see it by going to their course page. As you saw, the recordings are integrated into their course page. It's not a separate um, thing. They can download or they can stream with the Engage player. <coughs> um, we force the downloads with nice file names. Um, we modified Engage player, well, modified is a nice way of putting it, um, <laughs> to work for HTML5 video, um, which it sort of does. 10% uh, of our views are from mobile devices, so I guess it does work. And some viewing statistics. Um, see if you can spot the revision week. Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah, as was said before, everything is all, most of the views are done in the in the period where the exams are on, and as you see, it drops down to nothing afterwards. Uh, but our peak month was about 100,000. So for system administrators, this is our, um, our server infrastructure. <coughs> <coughs> so we get uh, input, obviously, from Galicasters, but also from um, Study Direct, which is our Moodle um, instance. Um, Study Direct stuff, the upload stuff, goes into the administration machine, um, and all the Galicasters go into our ingest machine. Uh, we haven't run out of capacity on our ingest machine yet with so far, but we can obviously add more if necessary. Uh, we currently got two worker machines, which are real. Uh, so the ones with the solid outline are real <coughs> machines, and the uh, dotted lines are VMs. Uh, the worker machines are, I think we've got 64 cores of um, uh, CPUs each, and lots of RAM, um, and uh, we can do we can do transcoding very fast on them. Um, the delivery machines, we've got three machines doing serving up delivery stuff. Uh, we run Wowser and Apache on them. Um, <coughs> they're behind a load balancer, a hardware load balancer box. Um, and uh, we distribute it via Study Direct and Learning Management System and also other websites, um, departmental websites and uh, external stuff. And um, the operations box is sharing the NFS um, stuff. So, oops, sorry. We use CentOS 6.5 um, and the repo, which is very handy. Thank you. Um, we use Puppet and uh, Cobbler for repeatable builds of machines. Um, we have uh, HTTPS on Apache in front of everything, um, so everything is HTTPS. Um, and the load balance delivery machines, as I said, have WOWs on as well. Uh, the delivery machines all have a full copy of all of our delivery media. Uh, which gets r-synced fairly regularly um, across from the SAN. 
um, and he, both whales around Apache will fall back to the sand if the uh, file isn't already copied locally. Um, that's partly for speed reasons and partly for um, backup reasons. It's an easy way of having a backup of everything. Uh, this is our workflow stuff. We publish twice in our workflow, uh, once after doing the low quality version, um, and then after that we do the um, segmenting, OTRing, which we don't actually expose to anywhere yet, um, and the uh, high quality version. Uh, this means that we can get our recordings showing up in our uh, virtual learning environment. Um, if it's a 50 minute recording, which is sort of average, without a camera, um, we do it in under 15 minutes. Um, so that's fairly reasonable. Uh, so monitoring, uh, definitely need to do that. <coughs> uh, so we do some basic mo Nagios monitoring, pinging and checking that HTTP and RTMP services are, are there. Uh, we also use um, ConnectD with Graphite and Grafana to draw pretty pictures um, and gather useful data as well. Um, useful for capacity planning and things. Uh, but we do need to do more of it. <coughs> and we're looking at um, uh, importing the logs into the ELK stack so that they're easily searchable and usable. Uh, so, from the support side of things, there are two of us who look after lecture capture, but it's only a very small part of our jobs, really. Um, <coughs> we also do all sorts of other strange things like uh, designing lecture theatres and dealing with contractors and things, so um, it's a bit strange. So, the good thing is that we can go for long periods of time, sometimes months at a time, without thinking about Matterhorn at all. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, <coughs> but... <coughs> it, it's a, good, it's a good thing in that we don't have to worry about it, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. <coughs> it, uh, it works all the time, um, and uh, yeah, we don't have to fiddle with it. Most of the issues we've had are due to infrastructure issues uh, and not anything to do with Matterhorn itself. So uh, things like load balancer issues and um, running out of space and things like that. And our first line support is provided by the student desktop and AV support team. <coughs> they are the people who look after <coughs> the lecture theatres, the computer clusters, printing, all that kind of stuff. So as far as they're concerned, Gallicast is just another piece of AV kit, so um, it's not a, an extra burden on them. They currently use VNC and SSH to do their um, uh, maintenance, and uh, when someone phones up and says it's not working, they can, they can look in via VNC. Um, but we've uh, just finished, or nearly finished building um, an app for monitoring, um, which is another plugin for Gallicaster, which provides real time data. <coughs> uh, so we can have things like audio levels and images, and whether it's recording and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've got real time control of the audio faders and stuff as well, so you can set levels um, and listen to the audio, to make sure it's right. Uh, you can start and stop and pause and everything. We've got links into our network registration <coughs> systems and stuff when we're starting a recording. Uh, so, um, yeah, for legacy reasons, our Matterhorn doesn't know anything about users, so uh, like people were talking about in the um, session earlier about the APIs. Our integration is a weird mixture of, um, we don't, our learning management stuff directly communicates with Matterhorn using the um, API user um, to build those pages that you saw earlier. But then we also actually do use the engage player um, to play stuff back. So we have no authentication on playback of stuff. Um, we just use the learning management system to, dis to only show the recordings that lecturers have um, included for their courses. Uh, but it complicates things like uploading video files and editing and things, so which we want to add. Um, so we need to think about a way of dealing with that. We've also had to patch some of the API endpoints um, to not answer to things because uh, things like the search API, <coughs> because all of our recordings are open to everybody, 
you could query the search API and search for everything. Um, so we've protected the search API uh, and uh, got basically a clone of it that only responds to queries about specific IDs. <coughs> um, yeah, we don't have real policies about nature capture, unlike earlier where it was driven uh, from Manchester, where it's driven by academic user. Um, it, it, we sort of got into it by accident. Um, as I say, we, we started doing lecture capture because we were fed up with carrying tape recorders around. Um, so it sort of happened by default rather than being planned for by the senior management of the university. So consequently, there were no um, policies about how it used, how it's how it's to be used, um, who owns what, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, that needs to get sorted. We also have no disposal policy for any of our stuff. Um, so hopefully disk drives will keep getting cheaper and we can just not think about that. Um, <coughs> Engage player was really hard to uh, bodge, um, but hopefully that will be um, improved in the future with um, Imperial Pass player. Um, upgrading from 1.3 to 1.4 was pretty tough. Um, the schema changes and stuff in the database um, caused us some issues and it took downtime to actually um, do the upgrade, which was not ideal. So um, we're planning to upgrade to 1.6 or 2.0, not sure, depending on what state things are in um, in the summer. I haven't really looked at either in great detail yet, but um, hopefully our, hopefully the upgrade will be easier. Um, we should participate much more in the community. Um, we don't give back enough. And, uh, Part of it is because, uh, as I said before, we don't we go for months without thinking about it. Um, and it's quite hard to stay engaged in something that we we, we we intensively work on it for a couple of months at a time, and then f after that we just forget about it and have to sort of move on with our other jobs. <coughs> but we need to do much more in um, engaging with uh, community and stuff. Um, we also don't have any Java developers, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, so, some thanks. Um, my colleagues in Learning Systems Corporation, who is um, my colleague, we sort of work on this together, and my manager in, is uh, Carol. In infrastructure Services, um, they helped us a lot with uh, Puppet and uh, Cobbler and stuff because those were services that actually existed on campus. Um, so, they helped with um, integrating the metal and stuff in it with that, and our uh, support team, and of course, uh, everyone in the open course community. And Teltech for uh, uh, Gallicaster because um, that saved us a lot of work. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> so I, I have a question, and I, I have the mics, so I'll go first. <laughs> um, so the monitor that you showed before that looked really cool. I, I really like the idea of um, you know real time adjustments with. I really like the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, are you going to release any of that publicly? Because uh, I'd like to steal some of it. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, yeah. We probably will. Um, it's just in the finalisation uh, of, of working. It's uh, based on Node.js and well, actually on Meteor.js. Uh, which sends real-time stuff around via DDP protocol over WebSockets. Um, and so we've got a DDP plugin for, uh, for Gallicaster, which feeds the data in in real time. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool, actually, when you move the phases up and down and things will happen in real time. And yeah, that's a great idea. Stuff, but <coughs> um, yeah, so uh, hopefully, yeah, there's nothing... I don't think there's anything too specific to us in it, so uh, it should be pretty easy to, to let you... Okay. Play with. Yeah, cool, thanks. Oh. <coughs> hey, I have a question. Um, so there's a Moogle pl plugin for doing re recording a lecture yourself with your phone, was that correct? And then well, basically, it's a file upload plugin. Okay. And because of the way mobiles work, when you press the file upload button, it gives you the option to. You to open the camcorder or whatever. Ah, cool. Kind of thing, I was so. thinking maybe it's like a, a web RCT or something like that. Um. Yeah, um, that's something we're also looking at. Um, we've got some. Uh, we've got a user who teaches sign language, and he wants to be able to have uh, a plugin so that you can record within the browser 
um, to enable forums to be accessible to sign user sign, sign language users. So that's something we're looking at as well. Um, so um, PC and stuff. Uh, so me and also uh, Ben Wolf have looked at it a little bit. So uh, get in contact. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, we can maybe share some stuff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hello, Vicente from Teltec. Uh, have you thought in uh, contributing uh, those plugins uh, to um, to Calicaster? Yeah, uh, a lot of my stuff is already contributed. It's all on GitHub anyway. Um, there are some uh, like <coughs> uh, the. DDP plugin for this stuff. Um, I had to do some some further in-depth modifications to yeah. Calicaster. Um, not many, but <laughs> I need to sort of clean it up a bit before I submit it, before I make a pull request. But it's all on GitHub if you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, uh, and other fixes that we've done, we've already pushed back to you. So. Yeah, I know. Really nice work. Thank you. Uh, one question um, in, in the Moodle. Can each user or every teacher see every other recording from yes. any other teacher? Because uh, I think if I would do that at my university, I would get... <laughs> yes. Uh, apart from uploads. Uh, uploads are specific to you. Um, anything that's made, any recordings that are made in the theatres are not specific to you. Uh, we've probably changed that a little bit. Um, in that if you do actually put your user ID when you're making a recording, we can obviously restrict that, but at the moment we don't. Um, it's partly just legacy reasons, that's how it's always worked, so nobody's questioned it. Um. <laughs> okay, I've got one then. Um, you've obviously done a huge amount of customization um, for, for both Galacaster and, and Matterhorn. Um, do you have any concerns or, or, or plans to sort of make this maintainable in, in the future? So are you planning to upgrade to 1.6? So you're going to have to yeah. have to move those changes forwards? Yeah, we've, we've not done a huge amount to Matterhorn, mostly because, as I say, we're not really Java developers, so we sort of tinker around the edges and make things work for our particular use case. Um, so hopefully the, um, the, our patches are not too terrible and things haven't changed terribly underneath. If stuff is useful for other people, then that's great. I've got, we've got no um, objection to sharing stuff. The only problem is that some, most of the stuff, when we, when we change it, we change it because we really have to, because it's very specific stuff to us. And I don't know how useful it will be to other people, but if other people want to make that judgment, then that's fine with us, yeah, if it is useful. But you'll probably hate our... No, yeah, 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 it's, c it's specific, but it's some really cool integrations that you've kind of, yeah, smoothed over a lot of, uh, lots of little gaps in the, in the software. Yeah, we mean like the Moodle stuff. Yeah. That is extremely specific to our... Uh, <laughs> as I say, unfortunately, it's, it, the, well, they all know 2.8 or something now on <coughs> Moodle. We're all 1.9. Um, it, it's already heavily modified as it is and also it's still got all the legacy stuff to deal with three separate uh, lecture capture systems all running at the same time in it so yeah maybe maybe at some point we'll get to rewrite it from scratch and it'll be clean and uh, <laughs> whatever we may, maybe we'll upgrade to Moodle 2.8 or whatever but um, but at the moment it's probably not really useful to anyone I've got no objections to anyone seeing our code but you'll probably hate it <laughs> <laughs>